What's up guys, welcome back to a new Kang and Omega chapter review. Today we have chapter 102. In short, this was another solid chapter with the fight between Jaime and Jirota being absolutely greatness. And I can safely say this is one of the best fights so far in the Purgatory tournament, if not the best fight so far in the tournament. Regardless, I think this fight will end next chapter with this chapter being key and setting up the final and climax of this great fight. We also got some interesting stuff revealed at the end regarding Maguro and Jaime and you know the whole cloning thing that's going on between the two of them which of course it's at the end of chapter most reveal based stuff comes at the end of Kangen chapters but yep solid stuff throughout this chapter on to the review be a mad lad by subscribing and joining the superior side helping me reach my 2021 goal of 100k subscribers I also have a patreon for people who want various benefits while supporting the channel directly alongside the discord server and my twitter that's all linked in the description now enjoy the video the chapter starts out with Jaime going for a kick and actually missing Drotta so he can hook one of his toes in Drotta's pants to try you know slam him and as he does that he goes for a punch to the side of Drotta's face we see blood coming out of Drotta's mouth so that did some damage we got Okubo noticing what happened there that Drotta actually hesitated for a split second then and that was due to Jaime hooking his toe inside the pants of Drotta preventing him from going for a full power or a regular slam he would have gone for and allowing Jaime to get the advantage and go for a punch on Jaime here with this demonstrating more of Jaime's adaptability and actual strategy going into this fight with him being aware that he is pretty much all around inferior to Drotta so he's using various strategies alongside with his you know survivability hacks and some other stuff which I'll talk about in short time. Jaime is able to land another direct punch on Drotta's face dealing even more damage to him and then as he's going for his third punch he gets his arm dislocated by Drotta demonstrating that Drotta doesn't 100% slam his opponent that he can do other stuff such as grabbing his opponent's arm and dislocating it here so that you know gives Drotta even more you know power in his arsenal and then after doing that of course Drotta slams him with this pretty badass looking panel I have to admit we see Jaime on the ground in like a mini crater from that slam and Drotta looking a little bit worn out now with blood coming from his face from the two punches Jaime is able to land we then cut to our boy Lolong who goes over something I've mentioned in quite a few of my videos I'll go over what he says now before that Lolong is thinking to himself the following how ironic while fighting in purgatory Drotta has become too strong and this is where he gets into compatibility player a can beat player b multiple times and c will never win to b but a will also never win to c this is not limited to martial arts rather is prevalent in almost every type of game this is the factor called compatibility which is you know shown throughout the whole of Kangen Ashura Kangen Omega a main example I've used in previous videos is how Hatsumi Sen was able to defeat Wakatsuki in the past with that being due to Wakatsuki getting countered by soft styles and Hatsumi being a master of those said soft styles in turn being able to defeat Wakatsuki easier than what someone else would or has a higher chance to defeat someone who fights like Wakatsuki and this, you know, compatibility is prevalent in pretty much most fights. There are some characters throughout Kangen which have a, you know, very limited amount of people that can actually defeat them. Main examples being Julius and Toa due to how large they are and pretty much how much raw power they have making characters who even do counter them struggle immensely and then we have characters like Kanagito who have evolution who can pretty much counter you know people who countered them back which is honestly peak hacks if you haven't already make sure to check out my Kanagito's overpowered video that I uploaded yesterday one of the best videos I've ever made in my opinion but yep back to the chapter review of course our boy Jaime is straight up after getting slammed with that massive crack in the ground and of course he fixes his dislocated arm with zero effort with Saika and Jerry Tyson freaking out remembering the similarities between Jaime now and Meguro Masaki during Kangen Ashura. and they actually mention Meguro Masaki while watching the fight which catches Jirota's attention with him saying again you are Meguro Masaki aren't you with him being kind of right he's just the clone of Meguro Meguro with Jaime's response being what you're a bit strange aren't you making me believe even more so that he doesn't actually know he's a clone of Meguro 
and he actually believes, or from what he knows, he is the brother of Maguro rather than a clone of him. And Haim is also showing that he isn't going insane and he just has a crazy durable body and that he may have some other neurological like ability like Maguro turning pain into pleasure. He may have something similar to that, but he is actually sane and a pretty intelligent character. Coming back to the compatibility point, we have Oma saying the following. Jirata has no finishing move against Haimi. At this rate, a forfeit is incoming, so he thinks Jirata is just going to give up because he can't actually defeat Haimi in this battle. And we have Koga listening to him. Doesn't he have his throw? And then Koga realizes what Oma meant then. With Jirata pretty much outclassing Haimi so much that he has pretty much overwhelming strength over Haimi. And if he continues to throw Jaime like he was at the start of the fight, Jaime will actually end up dying. And of course, due to the purgatory rules, that will end in Jota losing. And we actually have Koga thinking that Jaime was actually planning to do this the whole time, with him actually realizing that he was inferior to Jota and that this was his plan since the very start. With that being something very interesting to think about, we cut back to the fight with Jaime pretty much apologizing for punching Jota, with him saying he couldn't beat Jota at Judo as, you know, Jota is far superior at Judo to Jaime and you got Jota responding no rule you know states that you need to apologize I chose the path of no killing myself it has nothing to do with you so Jota is aware of his limitation in this battle and maybe all up with him saying here I chose the path of no killing so it may mean he doesn't like killing people which may limit him if he does participate in Kanga matches or in a future video of mine Jota against the Kanga Dutch Annihilation Tournament if he doesn't want to kill his opponents. We cut back to our boy Lo Long again, who mentioned that the one style Jirata uses, Judo, is leaving him at a disadvantage in this situation against Jaime, but he still believes in Jirata, with him saying that Jirata has pretty much dedicated everything to his one thing, his Judo, and that doing so, he has reached a new level of strength, which makes me think that alongside other masters of various styles, for example, Gaolang at striking or Ohm at the Nico style, Jirata is another level above that, being a master to such a simple thing, making him a next level like master of that. For example, we have Kroki Gensai, who's already compared himself or compared Jirata to himself, who's a master of the K1 style or karate and considered the pinnacle of martial arts and you know also has his foresight and everything else going with him. Maybe Jota, due to how simple Judo is in comparison to everything Kuroki knows, his mastery of Judo is better than what Kuroki's mastery is of the K1 style, which makes pretty logical sense as he doesn't really have anything else going for him. That's not really a bad thing as this shows how dedicated Jota is to Judo and making him really his own character and Lo Long you know even mentions this, a new level of strength, making me think that Lo Long is a master of various other things, maybe his specific martial arts, maybe foresight, maybe some other hacks as well, which puts him above Jota in overall strength like I'm already assuming Kanoe Gita is and Kuroki is, but the degree that Jota has mastered Judo is pretty much at the highest level of anything in this series we've seen so far. That's my view on that, let me know your force down in the comments. But yep, yeah, we cut back to the fight with Jaime going for a few blows with Jota being able to block them and going for a slam. But as Jota goes for the slam on Jaime, Jaime has been waiting for this and actually uses his elbow to pretty much destroy the shoulder of Jota making Drota's arm pretty much useless for him now. It's just hanging off the bone pretty much. So Jaime has done an insane amount of damage to Drota in this little back and forth, which is absolutely insane, showing more of Jaime's genius, which was mentioned when he first walked out the fight. And a lot of people already assumed he was some type of genius with him not being a super crazy master of his specific martial art being judo. So yep, Jaime is an absolute beast and this fight has been top tier so far. And then for the remainder of the flashback, we have Jaime thinking about his time with Meguro, which confirms that Jaime wasn't cloned after Meguro's death in the Kangen Ashro Annihilation Tournament, that he was cloned beforehand with him saying the following. My older brother always used to do that, referring to slamming Jaime, you know, head first trying to kill him. With him saying in the flashback, haha, big bro, you sure are strong. And you know, Meguro being an absolutely insane crazy dude. Why are you still alive? I tried to kill you there. So even Meguro trying to kill Jaime, he isn't able to do that. 
And then he, Meguro says the following, how creepy, you're interesting. And then the final line is Jaime saying the following, big bro, this person is stronger than you. However, big bro was heaps creepier, which is pretty obvious due to how crazy and insane looking Meguro actually was. This flashback scene also explains why Jaime is so durable and able to tank so many slams from someone as strong as Jurata, because he was pretty much slammed to the brink of death or with the aim of being killed by his brother, or I shouldn't say brother, by his former real self, I guess, or this pretty much slammed trying to be killed by Meguro, which is interesting. So I'm guessing Jaime has become something like a tank after surviving all these killer intense slams from Meguro, who's a powerhouse in his own right. But yep, that's it for today's chapter review. As always, thanks to the people who support the channel via the Patreon, absolute mad lads. But yep, that's it guys, peace.